Hello and welcome to General Organic Chemistry Screencast Part 2 and in this video we're going to talk about uh, inductive effect. Uh, inductive effect is defined as the polarization of sigma bonded electrons towards the atom of higher electronegativity. Now what this basically means is that if I have two different atoms A and B attached to each other. Please understand B is not boron. I'm just taking any 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 particular atom or group here. Now assume that this B atom is more electronegative than A atom. So this shared pair of electrons which is expected to be right in the middle if it is a perfect covalent bond would tend to move towards B a little bit more. That is because B is going to pull the electrons towards itself because of higher electronegativity. This polarization of sigma bonded electrons is called inductive effect. Okay? Now it need not be that the atoms forming the bond need to be different. You could even have the same atom getting bonded but it may be attached to different groups. This may be attached to B, this may be attached to some group E, and it's possible that B being more electronegative pulls electrons from A. E could be less electronegative than A. It could push electron towards A and eventually all these translates into this electron, this bonded electron pair getting pushed towards this A. So inductive effect also comes into play in situations where atoms of the same type are bonded to each other. But that is of course provided that you know that other atoms and groups attached to these atoms are different. So uh, that is the primary uh, definition of uh, an understanding of uh, inductive effect. Now another important thing is that we measure inductive effect with respect to hydrogen as the reference atom. That means whenever inductive effect is going to be talked about, we're going to keep a hydrogen as a reference and then talk about the inductive effect of a particular atom or group. That means the inductive effect of hydrogen atom is taken as a reference and therefore it is taken as a value 0. So even though we don't quantitatively find out what the inductive effect is, inductive effect is not a quantitative uh, value that is being given, but hydrogen atom is taken as a reference that means it has no inductive effect. So every other group's inductive effect is measured with respect to hydrogen. Now, having said this, we also need to understand that inductive effect is of two types. One is it could pull electrons towards a particular atom or group and the other is pushing electrons towards an atom or group. So pushing electrons away is called plus I effect while pulling electron towards is minus I effect. But please remember this is with respect to hydrogen atom which means if there is an atom or group of atom trying to push the electrons away from themselves compared to hydrogen then we call them as plus I effect and if they are able to pull the electrons towards themselves compared to hydrogen we call them as minus I effect. So now let's understand how can we compare something with hydrogen always. So let's check the inductive effect of a methyl group. So CH3 groups inductive effect is what we want to check. So let's take HX. Now HX is a molecule where hydrogen is bonded to some atom or group X. Now this X traditionally is taken as a halogen and here also we can assume it is a halogen but need not be halogen, it could be any group. When we compare the inductive effect, we need to take hydrogen specifically and bond hydrogen with any atom. In this particular case, I'm taking a halogen. Now, so halogen we know is more electronegative than hydrogen. So initially when the HX bond formed, the electron was right across, right in the middle of these two. But we know that X being more electronegative, it will pull the electrons from H, from this middle part and the electrons will slowly move towards X and both H and X get a negative and a positive charge. So this delta plus and delta minus is because of the higher electronegativity of X. Now, once we have seen this, now we're going to keep this situation as a reference situation. So what I'm going to do is, in this situation, I'm going to take out the H and I'm going to replace the H with any test group, a group whose inductive effect is going to be checked. So in this particular case, I need to keep a methyl group. So let me first remove the H and put a carbon instead. And please note the electron is right where it was in HX. 
okay now we're going to see what will happen to these electrons now that hydrogen has been replaced by this if eventually the electrons get pushed towards X that means this group has pushed electrons compared to where it was in the case of hydrogen so we call this as plus inductive if these electrons get pulled towards then it has pulled electrons compared to hydrogen we call it a minus I effect now if I were to only put carbon which of course is not possible but if imaginarily speaking I do put only a carbon atom then we know that carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen so what carbon should do it is should pull these electrons towards itself and as it does that this becomes some kind of a negative charge the negative charge here reduces in spite of the fact that the electrons may still remain majorly with X because halogen is more electronegative than C so but compared to H these electrons may slightly get pulled towards C but remember we want to check the inductive work of methyl group and not just carbon atom so we're going to put three hydrogens now the moment I put three hydrogens things change because what happens is the electrons of the CH bond which are in the beginning considered to be in the middle we know that carbon is more electronegative than H so what will happen is these electrons will get pulled by the carbon as it does that it develops a negative charge some partial negative charge now remember carbon's partial negative charge accumulated because of pulling these electrons would try to push these electrons towards X on the other hand carbon's electronegativity compared to hydrogen tries to pull these electrons with respect to hydrogen so both effects are going to work together now what dominates is something which cannot be predicted but it is seen that a methyl group tends to push the electrons away compared to where it was found in the case of HX that means the negative charge on the carbon overpowers and dominates and therefore pushes these electrons towards X so this is exactly what happens electrons come towards carbon negative charge pushes these electrons and the negative charge on the X increases we'll do see it once more electrons coming towards carbon negative charge on carbon this pushes the electrons negative charge on the X increases so we notice that in the case of methyl group the electrons are closer to X than they were in the case of H so we can say that on replacing H with a methyl the electrons are pushed towards X or away from the methyl so a methyl group is supposed to have a plus I effect and we have done this after comparing it with hydrogen so methyl has a plus I effect now what we're going to do is we are going to replace one edge of the methyl with another methyl so let's do this again this was the case in the case of a methyl group the electrons came closer to carbon electron got pushed towards X and X became more minus now if you notice this is where the electrons were found in the case of hydrogen and it is from this reference point that the electrons in the methyl group have gone towards X so this is the extent of inductive effect of a methyl group now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out one edge from here and I'm going to replace it with another methyl group now so this becomes CH2 now this is CH3 now notice these electrons are right where it was in the case of methyl now what will happen is this methyl will push electrons towards this so the negative charge here becomes much more than negative charge it becomes here because if you notice in this bond hydrogen did not push the electrons remember hydrogen's inductive effect is zero it was carbon that pulled the electrons here the methyl group itself is pushing the electrons towards carbon that would increase the negative charge density on this carbon therefore it would push the electrons much more than what a single methyl group did so it means that if in the case of methyl the electrons were here in the case of an ethyl group the electrons are going to go a little more towards X they come towards carbon and this moves towards X and you notice the negative charge increases so it means when I increase the carbon chain the plus inductive effect increases meaning that the inductive effect of an ethyl group is more than the inductive effect of a methyl group but what you also must notice is that the inductive effect of a methyl group compared to hydrogen 
this difference is greater than the difference of the second methyl has because in the case of a second methyl group the pushing happens only to this extent in the case of a single methyl compared to hydrogen the pushing happened here that means the second carbon if it is put away from the bond the inductive effect of the second methyl is not equal to that of the first methyl so the second carbon does not have the same inductive effect as the first one does so which means a two carbon chain is not going to have double the inductive effect of a single carbon one now what we're going to do we're going to do two things we're going to replace one H here with a CH3 and then I'm going to replace one H here with the CH3 and then check so increasing carbon chain increases plus I effect but the rate of increase is decreasing that means the second methyl does not have the same increase on the inductive effect as the first methyl had so let's replace one H of CH3 with another CH3 and then one H of CH2 with the CH3 so let's replace this this is CH2 this is again CH2 and you notice the electron are right where it was in the case of ethyl so this is the ethyl situation but now I have a propyl situation so this is going to push electrons towards this this will end up pushing it more negative charge increases more and the electrons eventually gets pushed towards X more goes here this gets pushed here this eventually pushes it here so notice three carbon chain has more inductive effect than a two carbon chain so remember in the case of hydrogen the electrons were here in the case of a single methyl the electrons were here in the case of three carbons the electrons are here that means three carbons have more inductive effect than two two have more inductive in effect than one but again you notice rate of increase is decreasing the third carbon has not pushed the electrons as much as the second one has had so we expect that as the carbon chain keeps on increasing linearly we will find the extent of inductive effect decreasing to such an extent that beyond four atoms or five atoms inductive effect hardly has any impact now what we're going to do is we're going to put the third carbon on the first carbon rather than on the second carbon if you notice this methyl was put on the second carbon now I'm going to put this methyl on the first carbon so this becomes CH a methyl and a methyl now obviously the methyl being closer to the given bond where we are looking at the inductive effect it will have a greater impact on this bond so this is going to push directly here this is going to push directly here the negative charge accumulated here is going to be much more than here so this will end up pushing the electrons more than it does here the negative charge on X increases further and notice this is how the third carbon has behaved so third carbon put at the end will have a lesser inductive effect than if it is put very close to the reference bond therefore inductive effect decreases with distance so if you decrease the distance inductive effect increases you increase the distance the inductive effect decreases so now let's look at an sp2 hybridized carbon so in the case of an sp2 this is the hydrogen situation it was right in the middle X attracted it and these are the charges so I'm going to replace the H with an sp2 carbon and of course I need at least two carbon atoms for that now this carbon is more electronegative even than an sp3 so this carbon being more electronegative again can have two effects it can pull the electrons and because of the hydrogens attached it can push the electrons because of some negative charge accumulated on it but unlike an sp3 carbon sp2 carbons electronegativity being higher it ultimately pulls these electrons towards itself meaning the electrons go like this now notice the negative charge has shrunk but notice it is still negative it means these electrons are still more towards with the X but compared to hydrogen they got pulled they got pulled away from X therefore an sp2 carbon is said to have a minus I effect and therefore we can uh, extrapolate that to saying that an sp carbon has probably the most minus I effect of all the carbon atoms now another thing about inductive effect that we need to know is inductive effect is a particle effect 
this means it is the manifestation of the particle nature of electrons now we know that electrons have both particle and wave nature but inductive effect is purely the particle effect of an electron that is because you are actually talking about an electron being at a particular place we are saying it's here it is moved here the charge of increase decrease so when we localize something that is the particle nature at play so inductive effect is a particle effect whereas the resonance effect which will come in the next video that is the manifestation of the wave nature of an electron so and we already seen inductive effect dissipates with distance increase the distance inductive effect goes down inductive effect is a permanent effect which means it exists in a molecule always right from the birth of the molecule and inductive effect is a weak effect because it is just the tweaking of the sigma bond electrons and the movements occurring even though I've shown you exaggerated movements here but the movements are so l so less in terms of distance that it's not a very strong effect it's a very weak effect and inductive effect is an always effect now this is a very very important part it's an always effect always effect means that inductive effect is not based on whether the other atom or molecule needs the electron or not a particular atom or group is going to push or pull the electrons irrespective of with which it is attached because remember inductive effect is an effect based on hydrogen as reference that means if A is attached to A let's uh, take this example if A is attached to A I will not say there is no inductive effect here if A is plus I I will say both have equal plus I and therefore the electron is right in the middle if A is minus I, I'll say both are minus I and the electron is therefore right in the middle. Which means the inductive effect of A is not based on what it is attached with. It is only with respect to hydrogen. So if A is minus I with respect to hydrogen, then this bond has minus I and minus I effect both cancelling each other. But the effect of A is minus I. So remember, whenever two atoms are joined together it not it does not mean that one is plus i and the other is minus i both could be plus i both could be minus i and one could be plus i and another could be minus i and obviously when both are having the same inductive effect one could be more and the other could be less so inductive effect is an always effect it means that it is not based on the need of a molecule or a system it will show its effect irrespective of whether that effect is required or not and uh, order of decreasing inductive effect is like this plus i groups are in this order and minus i groups are in this order so this is something which uh, you need to learn but remember anything with a negative charge is plus i anything with a positive charge is minus i and uh, maybe in, a, in, in some, uh, some more videos slowly we'll understand why this order is given the way it is given but for the time being this is what the basics of inductive effects are so we'll catch up in the next video with the resonance effect thanks for watching